I'm going to head out into the spring garden and do some more plantings. So I actually ordered some more seeds. Watering this garden is a must now because the seeds are actually coming up. So the banana passion fruits are finally ripening. Good morning everyone. Today is not going to be a bus day or a bus weekend because Sam is actually away and I'm heading to Floriard this weekend which I'm planning to actually vlog for you over on the Simply Die channel. I'm really excited for that. You know me though, I cannot sit still and there is absolutely no way that for the next two days I'm not going to be doing anything. So at least for today, Thursday and Friday, the plan is to reset my house and I'll explain what that means in just a moment. I'm going to head out into the spring garden and do some more plantings. I also have a few exciting little updates on that, so stay tuned. I'm going to do that a little later today because it's supposed to be a beautiful day. And I also have ambitions to finally finish our bus curtains today. I was a little bit slack with finishing them off. I did run out of string and so I took that as an excuse, but today's the day to do it. We're heading into summer and so it's officially starting to get hotter and hotter. And if we can insulate the bus and then also get the curtains up to stop the sun coming in, then it's really going to help keep that space cool for us to work in. So that is all the plans for the day. Let's get right into it. I buy a lot of my pantry staples in bulk. That means things like bread flour, grains such as rice, quinoa and buckwheat, lentils, spices, some sauces, and even dish detergent. I then take the time to fill up jars and containers as they need it. Check out my mead. <laughs> I wonder what it tastes like. And then this is the miso. I'd love to have a look at that as well. But I can see it might need a clean. I made this miso paste with you a few months back. It should be ready by the time we move on to the bus. Cool. Looks good. I'm just gonna scrape some of the mold off and Put it in for a bit, for a while longer. Looks great, actually. And the mold is because it's been exposed to the air. That's fine. Okay, let's give that all a bit clean. I wonder if it needs more weight on it. Buying in bulk not only saves you money in the long run and reduces plastic containers, but it also adds a lot of food security knowing that when you run out, there is still some more in the pantry to refill with. Thank you. 
I give the shelves and jars a bit of a clean as I go, ensuring it is neat and tidy. A lot of the bags collected from buying in bulk just get stored away until our bulk buying group puts together another order. We finally invested in a dishwasher. This will be installed in the bus to conserve water. We got it at an absolute bargain at only $200 and the size is perfect. I have loved making my own dishwashing tabs for it, which I need to make some more of today. What I don't like though is that the bathroom is the only place we can currently have it. Not very convenient having to carry my dishes in and out. This is about how much fits into the dishwasher. Not bad. Alright, let's make some dishwashing tablets. So we need a cup of baking soda. cup of citric acid and a tablespoon of dish tablet uh, dishwashing liquid the mixture puffs up like snow when it's mixed it's a lovely texture I bought the ingredients for these almost five years ago now, and you can see how long they truly last. It does puff up, so I reckon fill the molds first. It does create these two perfect molds and then squish it down. Okay. So the banana passion fruits are finally ripening. This is my first one. If you've never seen them before, they're a lot softer than the normal passion fruit. And inside, they look like this. They're a lot sweeter, I find, than the standard passion fruit, but it's quite nice, it's good in a smoothie. So I'm gonna make myself a smoothie for the morning because I haven't had breakfast yet. I'm going to make some mustard. I'm gonna make some Dijon mustard in a moment and then we'll head out into the garden. I need to sort these strawberries out or they're gonna go bad. With strawberries being in season at the moment, it's cheaper to buy them like this and then to freeze them separately than to buy blueberries or anything else. So that's what I'm doing. I know it's not the most sustainable option. I'm hoping once berry farms around here or even down perhaps up towards Sydney or Canberra, maybe there's some berry picking farms. I should have a look. Maybe we can go pick a bunch of strawberries and freeze them. Because, yeah, this isn't. This creates a lot of plastic waste. Maybe that can be a new goal. We do go through a lot of berries. Or even stone fruit. I'm not sure. It's almost stone. Oh, actually, I'll make sure I pick lots of peaches. That'll be good. Trays of mangoes as well. The school is selling, so maybe I can get some mangoes like that. We need to give Kobe medication and these natural four legs boosting, these four legs like little meatballs have been perfect because you just put a tablet into them and he eats them right up. That's this guy. <laughs> okay, you ready for your tablet? 
Can I show the people how you do it? Go away. Go away. Eris away. Ruby. That's it. The other dogs get so jealous, but they're young, they don't need it. So I had a friend stay with me from Canberra just the other week and it was her birthday so we ended up getting a birthday cake for her. And so I'm just cleaning the packaging and putting it aside and I noticed something pretty special about it. I don't know what you see when you see this but to me I see a beautiful hex shaped mold for chocolate. I make my own homemade chocolate and this is going to be a really fun way to put a pattern into it. So I kind of want to try and see what happens. But yeah, it's just one of those Woolworths cakes. They've got all these little flavors and instead of throwing it out, give it another use. I've had these mustard seeds soaking in the fridge in some vinegar for way too long. And the recipe says now I need to strain them. The liquid is going to be really bitter and I'm just Hopeful that the fact that I left them for a few days isn't going to have too much of an effect. I don't have white wine, so I'm going to try some apple cider vinegar. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Sometimes too much experimenting is a bad thing be a little bit sour this mustard okay very liquid still but from memory it does thicken up Woo, spicy that's good not bad want you So I actually ordered some more seeds from Eden Seeds after I started planting in the garden with you guys last week. Um, I did notice that I had some of my bigger seeds missing. So things like corn I have to get every year. I need some basil because I think my seeds were really old. So I ended up planting all of them and hoping I would get lots of basil. I got one plant out of that, but you know, not much success rate there. I ordered some more zucchini. You guys know it's a goal of mine to plant lots of zucchini and be able to harvest it. And then I also got some radishes. I love cucumber and radish salad with sour cream mixed through. So the more of that that I have, the better. So that's what we're going to go out and plant into the garden today. I might hold off on the corn for now and plant it in another month's time. Before I get planting though, this area full of weeds has been a bit of an eyesore. So I just had to tackle it. Check this out guys, I found some volunteer lettuce that's getting eaten by the local kangaroos. So I'm going to see if I can replant it somewhere safer and hopefully it'll continue growing. Remember how I said there was something exciting in our garden that I wanted to show you? Well, the first seedlings have officially come up. And they're zucchinis. Every single one that I planted is coming up. And I think I've spotted the ground where the tomatoes or the pumpkins or something is. Here. Usually you know a seed's coming up when the ground's lifted like that because it means the seed is trying to sprout below. That looks like a bean. So I'm just gonna cover her up a bit. There's also some little seedlings here. This is either the coriander or it's going to be, um, well, what did I plant here? Coriander, pumpkin and beans. So that's what that is. There's another little bean plant. So that officially means watering this garden is a must now because the seeds are actually coming up and um, it's not just a false start for them. <laughs> they need water. No tomatoes yet. Actually, oh, the tomatoes are up as well. There's a little 
potato growing here. But then, look at this. Some of my carrots are coming up. That's crazy. Unless they're volunteer tomatoes or... Oh, you know what they could be? They might be coriander. But down here, there's definitely tomatoes. Right there. Oh man, I've forgotten the bounty of spring and summer. There's just seeds coming up everywhere. It's such a lovely sight. I'm so excited for tomatoes and cucumbers and zucchinis and pumpkins and beans and just absolutely everything growing again. And all the flowers too are popping up at the back. Yee! <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna plant some more of these towards the front. So I've got some zucchini, I've got basil and radishes as well. And I wanna show you guys just why I love Eden seeds so much. So one of their packets usually goes for about $3.50 and you get so many nice big seeds inside. You don't get any of those like little cheap, don't know if they're going to come up seeds. Like you get good quality seeds and they're affordable. Most of them are organic or at least non-hybrid, old traditional, open pollinated. Like it's just a great company to support. So super happy with that. Going to plant some more zucchini since summer coming up and yeah, lots of basil. In this garden, I ended up planting rows of radish, lettuce and basil. So last time I put a seed order in, I went a little bit crazy with flowers. I think at the time I was doing a lot of fresh bouquets. Of course, I was visiting Robin's garden at the Nature Patch. Um, she's a flower farmer, so she's always got incredible blooms. So I was super inspired and I bought all these flower seeds, but never had anywhere to plant them. And a lot of them were actually spring and summer seeds as well. But nonetheless, since I have them, I'm going to attempt to plant them. Some of them are so interesting. Like check these out. These are hollyhock seeds. Look at the way they're shaped. They almost look like little bugs. And so currently I have these two back beds available. Nothing is growing in them currently. I think the plan is to put corn into them eventually or put corn somewhere. I don't know what the plan is at this point. So I'm going to go off plan and actually plant all these flowers over here and yeah kind of hope for the best. I'll most likely spread them out throughout the other little flower areas. I see lots of volunteers so plenty of flowers coming up soon. Sweet William scarlet mix. I picked lots of very autumnal flowers. Status? Dalfinium. Stock. Hollyhock. Okay. And carmine red dianthus. Kind of sounds like my favorite. Okay, beautiful. And that is all the flowers. I ended up sprinkling a mix of these in the back of my garden too. Right. A garden just looks so happy and healthy when it's watered. So I'm glad I've got the sprinkler on. The reason I plant lots of flowers and things in between the beds is so that when I have the sprinkler on, I'm not wasting the water. It's still going to feeding something, whether it's compost building up in the pathways or whether it's, or whether it's going into the garden beds or even the little flower parts towards the edges. I just noticed so many lemons on the floor that I should probably pick up. At least it's in the shade. Try not to knock more off the tree. And there's still so many under there. Ooh, that sun this morning absolutely wiped me out. I have just seriously been resting 
for the last three hours, but now I'm ready to have a go at these curtains and get them started. Only because I would normally not do this, but I'm feeling like I have been putting them off for quite a while and I just need like a kick up the butt to just do it. So no excuses, we're just going to make a start. string somewhere and I can't remember where now so change of plans you know how I've been saying I've been putting this off because I thought I didn't have any string and then I found string so I could finally get the project going again well I don't remember where the string is so I'm literally walking around the house right now trying to figure out where I saw this string last and for the life of me I cannot remember where it could be. It was in like a really random spot that I stumbled upon. So annoying. So annoying. I didn't give up and I found it. There's not a lot though. It's in my, it's in my ethical wonder box. So good. I was somewhat organized. <laughs> we got there. Up, through, down. Sewing these curtains has been a task and a half. Just because of their size and rigidity, they're quite awkward to work with. Luckily, it's just straight lines, which is all my sewing skill can manage. When I get to the corners, I keep my needle in the fabric, lift the foot, rotate, put the foot back down, and then keep going. The needle keeps everything in place so that I can continue seamlessly from when I stopped. This reduces the fiddling because as I said, it can be a little bit tricky. Luckily, I learned this trick while quilting a few years back. Resident Kangaroo is back. Stay well, there's two. So cuties. Eris in. Having them come back is a little special, so I'm not gonna scare them off. I don't mind them coming and having a look at the garden. <laughs> it's like pink. <laughs> 